Let us now try and understand the energy produced during the entire process of respiration. So in this video, we'll be calculating the total energy gain in all the steps of aerobic respiration, that is glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, the electron transport chain, and the oxidative phosphorylation. So here, we are going to understand in a, in a tabular form. Here, I'm going to write the steps. The first step is the glycolysis. In glycolysis, one molecule of glucose is converted into two pyruvic acid. Now, this pyruvic acid then undergoes decarboxylation and forms acetyl coenzyme A. So, here I'm writing decarboxylation of pyruvic acid or pyruvate. This acetyl coenzyme A formed as a result of decarboxylation will now enter into the Krebs cycle. So these are the major steps. Now, whatever FADH2 and NADH2 we got, we got in these three steps. Now, in electron transport chain, the NADH2 and FADH2 actually breaks up or dissociate and they release energy. Thus, they are just creating a condition in which the energy is released and the protons are transferred from the matrix to the intermembrane space. While oxidative phosphorylation is the procedure where these protons which have been transferred from matrix to the intermembrane space are again passed to the matrix along with the synthesis of ATP and these movement, this movement of the proton takes place through the F0 and F1 particles. But in both the processes, that is oxidative phosphorylation and the um, electron transport chain, there is no synthesis or production of NADH2 or FADH2. Instead, we are utilizing these to produce ATP. So here, the major steps which are playing uh, or which are producing the ATP are these three. That is the glycolysis, the decarboxylation and the uh, decarboxylation of pyruvic acid and the Krebs cycle. Now here, we are in the next step. I'm going to write the number of molecules of ATP which are being directly produced. Now, let us talk about the glycolysis first. When we talk of glycolysis, the glycolysis is breaking down of one molecule of glucose into two pyruvic acid. So here, for every molecule, there are four ATP being produced, but two are utilized over there. So the net gain of ATP over here is two ATP. Although four are produced, but we have a a uh, net gain of 2 ATP. During the decarboxylation of pyruvic acid, there is no synthesis of ATP. Now here, in the Krebs cycle, there is for one molecule of glucose, the Krebs cycle should take place two times because one molecule of glucose produces two pyruvic acid. And for one pyruvic acid, there is synthesis of one ATP. During its uh, conversion, uh, from the uh, succinic, uh, succinic acid to succinate. So one Krebs cycle will give one ATP for one pyruvic acid. And since one glucose molecule produces two pyruvic acid, so here again the two ATP will be produced for one molecule of glucose or we call it as for two, molecule, two molecules of pyruvic acid. Now let us talk about the uh, NADH2 or FADH2 being produced. NADH2 or FADH2 which are being produced. Now, here the NADH2 will be producing, will be 2 NADH2 over here.
two NADH2 are produced and we know that one NADH2 is equal to 3 ATP. So here it will be 6 ATP produced as a result of the 2 NADH2 production. Here also during decarboxylation there are there is production of 2 NADH2. So again here we get 6 ATPs. Now let us try and understand about the Krebs cycle. In one Krebs cycle there are 3 NADH2 which are being produced and 1 FADH2 is being produced. But this cycle as I told you earlier this will be repeated 2 times for 1 molecule of glucose. So it was into 2. So here we have now 6 NADH2 and 2 FADH2. So 6 into 3 makes us give 18 ATP over here due to FADH2. And 1 FADH2 that cycle will be twice. So 2 FADH2, 2 into 4 that is 4 ATP over here. So total gain over here is this is the balance sheet which we have. Got. Now let us do the grand total of each step. Now the first step is glycolysis. In glycolysis we have 2 ATP over here and 6 ATP. That makes it 8 ATP during the process of glycolysis. The decarboxylation produces the second step that is the decarboxylation of pyruvic acid gives us 6 ATP and the Krebs cycle that is the third step gives us 18 and 4 and 2 that makes it 24 ATPs during the Krebs cycle. Let us do the totaling now. Totaling comes out to be 38 ATP. Now this 38 ATP is the net outcome of the energy which is produced during the breaking down of one glucose molecule. But here 2 ATPs are actually being used to pump 2 NADH2 produced during glycolysis and this glycolysis is taking place in the cytoplasm. So this NADH2 is to be pumped from the cytoplasm to the mitochondria for the uh, Krebs cycle. So this requires energy and as a result 2 ATP are utilized from here to pump the NADH2, 2 molecules of NADH2 from cytoplasm to mitochondria and as a result Two, we are reducing 2. So overall, the net gain when we talk is 36 ATP being produced finally for one molecule of glucose.